speaking of database, I mean, that was really how we accomplished so much, right, is, is from an organizational standpoint of the music, of the sound effects, and of the voice. And I remember, especially for voice, how critical it was. And what we in the sound department would do is inherit and share the use of the database with the voice department. Mm -hmm. um, and you could, you could do a search and isolate all the, the, the lines for, say, Manny, and, or isolate all the lines that needed to have reverb uh, baked into them or, or another type of processing. And then you would just divide and conquer and, and just master everything in groups and bring it all together, have a single reference for volume and uh, use the database to, to keep organized and isolate different uh, found sets of different criteria. Wow, Manny Calavera. You never come up here to see me anymore. Well, I thought you could use the company with everybody gone for the Day of the Dead. In that case, Manny, why don't you stick around until six? That's when I get off. Her, um... Her character is a little bit inspired by, I think it's Big Sleep too, where Bogart is hiding from someone. He needs to hide in a bookstore. Right. And he goes in there, and there's a woman in there, and uh, she's really into him. Tip of Ben, her 1863 edition, the one with wow. the errata on page 47 or something. Wow, yeah. that is a memory. Yeah. Well. And, and it's just really, he just, he looks at her, and he's like, um, she seems like she's really attracted to him, if I remember correctly. And he like takes off her glasses and is like, yeah, okay. Like it was really me kind of messed up scene. But um, well, it's that, that you know that was the the subtext yeah. of, of the noir film. And then he pulls the shades. Hanky to, panky. Yeah, the hanky panky. Yeah, yeah he right. lock, they lock the door and pull down the shades. And that's a little bit what this scene is all mm -hmm. a reference number two or inspired by. Because she's telling him her story. Mm -hmm. Ah, Carla. This is uh, Pamela Siegel, um, who plays Bobby on uh, King of the Hill. She's uh, quite a character. She's a minivan with uh, flames on the side oh, and yeah. a skull on the, uh, the front where it replaces, I don't, I don't know what brand it is, but let's say it's Chrysler or somebody, and so instead of the Chrysler logo, there's a skull and crossbones. <laughs> <laughs> She's pretty funny. Did she just do this as one big long? Yeah, well, all one take so she could build and build. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, let it let it sort of ebb and flow. And obviously, Pete's uh, quotation of "home, uh, there's no place like yeah. home," uh, is is something we all admired in Carl Stalling, who did a lot of the composition for the Merry Melodies, you know, Looney Tunes cartoons, and. Any time, as you may know, that a chicken comes on screen or something, it'll play Turkey in the Straw or yeah. uh, you know, various public domain songs that were relevant to the subject of the moment. So she was reminiscing about home, and, and Pete strikes up. That's uh, really cool. There's no place like home. <laughs> Busy night? Hardly. Everybody's gone home for the holiday already. This place is dead, and I'm bored, Manny. Bored. What's the shuttle waiting for? Oh, they're just cleaning it, but they're very thorough. We run a tight ship here, you know. Why don't you come by the club anymore? Well, to tell you the truth, Manny, it's your little coat check girl. All that bubbly energy, I just want to strangle her. I've tried that. It doesn't stop her. Well, see you, Carla. All right, Manny. Well, maybe just a sip. Ah. Ooh, I love this part. Sir, if you will, please place all of your belongings on the security desk. You sure you're not packing anything else? Nothing that would set off that thing. Then, sir, I'm afraid you'll have to step into the back with me. Rules are rules. And, of course, with my dad being in the military, we moved around a lot. Mm -hmm. I remember this one town we moved to when I was in the first grade. Oh, really? Yeah, the only industry in the area was figs. Acres and acres of fig trees everywhere you looked. I myself never really cared for figs. I always liked dates no, more. No, me neither. Or prunes. 
Don't you just love prunes? They have such a great texture. Never a big fan of prunes. They're all wrinkled up like my grandma Hedwig's face. Oh, <laughs> poor grandma Hedwig. She was always forgetting Hedwig, things. that's an interesting name. I remember one time back when I was six. Or maybe I was seven. No, 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 no. I had to be six because Mr. Rufus was still ah, alive. Ah, six. The golden year. Now there was a good dog, Mr. Rufus. He was such a sweet little puppy. We didn't care that he was deaf. I'll bet. He was as deaf as they come, but he'd still try to bark. And it would come out sounding like a cat coughing up a hairball, which our cat often did. He had such long hair. I don't really like long-haired cats, do you, Manny? Ooh. Ick. They're just so... I like short-haired cats. They seem less stuck up. People think I'm stuck up sometimes, believe it or not. No, 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 they really do. I don't no, know why. No, I just can't believe that. I guess it's because I'm so shy. I was shy all the way through high school. Yes, you seem shy. I never went to a single dance. Can you believe it? No, <laughs> don't get me wrong, the boys would ask, but I'd just run away. My mom said I could have been homecoming queen if I'd just smile once in a while. She always said... A smile is the most important part of any outfit. Well, moms are always right. Well, maybe I would have smiled more, Mom, if you hadn't drank so much. Was I supposed to smile when the cops called us in the middle of the night to tell us to come get you out of the drunk tank? Uh, maybe if I had smiled more, Daddy wouldn't have left us. I, uh... We'd be together right now, you, me, Daddy. Yikes. And Grandma Hedwig and Mr. Rufus. And I'd be wearing my homecoming queen crown and eating figs and... That reminds me. I need to call my bookie. And... And I'd... Oh, mother! <laughs> I'm so sorry! Oh, God. <laughs> Maybe you want to be alone now. metal detector for you while you cry. Did you just come back here to ask to borrow my metal detector? Yes. What is it with you in this thing? I'm sick of it, Manny. If this is all you want, you can fight the cats for it. Why is it all men are after the same thing? Except you. The only woman you care about is that Colomar dame, and she split on you. I don't know what she did to you, but you know what? I'm done trying to figure it out, pal. Carla. You wouldn't happen to have a second metal detector around here, would you? Ugh. Bye, Carla. Drop dead! Speaking of data... Speaking of database, I mean, that was really... I'm a strong believer in things that should be... When you're making stuff, it should be something that could only have been made by you or in that group of people, and at the time you made it in the place you made it. Yes. You know? I think Grimm is definitely that case. Like, only... That's one of the great things about Grimm. I think it's a collection of amazing artists, like you and the visual artists and the programmers and I, the actors and everything that came together for that game was just such a... Um, it was almost an overwhelming distraction of amazing artists coming together. Like, like, oh my mm. God, look at that! Look at that background! Oh my God, listen yes. to this music! Oh my God, listen to that voice! So I just, um, I think it makes that game really special. But it also has a lot of personal details that are just kind of woven into it that, that makes it so. Like, even if we were making this game from scratch with the same intentions today, it would just be completely different. I don't know why there's so much uh, union jokery in games that I've worked on, but I've always found it um, maybe because it was a big part of like um, movies that air like on the waterfront, mm -hmm. you know, the, and not so much unions, but um, mobster corrupt unions. Right. There's always a big part of that, you know, going on, and then also like worker, anti-worker, communist themes going on that like was all tied together. And I don't if that all sprung out of on the waterfront or um, other. Well, movies. on the waterfront though was kind of. Um I mean, it was sort of championing the 
the whatever the the, the plight of the working man, but it, but it also but was, was talking get... about the dark side of the union thing for sure. But it was a corrupt union. It was yeah, a it was. mob run yeah, deal. That's true. I know that statue's supposed to mean something about justice, but I don't know. Not picking that up could be a statue of a famous Olympic gymnast, I guess. I remember at the time it was a big debate, like, should we require P100 or P133, like penny 100, penny 133? It's like, nope, your target platform is whatever was on sale at CompUSA for 500 bucks last year. It's like a P70. Yeah, it's like, you know, P60, I think, is is what we ended up with as the minimum spec. We ended up going for P90 at the end, but it was one of the things where it's like, those kind of constraints where it's like, you really Mm -hmm. could pull it off with all the kinds of machines we had in the company, but the average consumer who we want to sell the game to did not have a machine like that. So and that's one of the vagaries of the PC market that still persists, you know? Yeah, and you wouldn't, you know, when you think about Grimm, you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily think, um, but there's like all hand-coded assembly rasterizers in here. There's hand-coded assembly blitters in mm-hmm. here. Um, lots of like layout asset management. Um, all You know, th- this was a... This was a tricky game to optimize and yeah. to, to get running acceptably on the kind of machines that people were going to be running it on. Um, yeah, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't come off like the same technical challenge as a Jedi Knight or yeah. something like that. And it wasn't. It's, I mean, it it's was, different, different kind of technical challenge, much more kind of interdisciplinary. Was really getting all this weird stuff happening at the same time. Just a dab will drop you. Hey man, you didn't see me put the secret ingredient in these coffin shooters, did you? Relax. Olivia stole the recipe from me in the first place. Yeah, she steals from the rich and gives to me to pour. In the final version of the game, are the backgrounds actually just pre-rendered flats? Yes, they are. Mm-hmm. See, that's that's yeah. amazing to me because you know we live in the world of 3D now. And we're used to floating the camera around inside of these things, but you know once you chose your camera angle to pre-render something, that was it. There you go. No, it's it's Manny walking around in a blank 3D room with Z depth uh, data to clip him in front of the um, the stuff that he needs to clip in front of. I didn't even I had never heard of actual sea bees before and someone made that I talked about the, how they could be these bees down there and they're like oh like sea bees and I was like where, where are sea bees yeah they were they were a, na- a navy thing yeah and wait does that come from the letter CB like something I don't know or construction brigade or I, something yeah good like like up. jeep comes from general pers- general yeah. uh, personnel vehicle yeah could so be. and this bee is called Terry because of the character from on the waterfront Marlon Brando's mm-hmm. character named Terry mm-hmm um so that's where we got all that stuff. 
That's Raphael Sparge, who um, he was actually the uh, the main character in Knights of the Old Republic okay. um, in the original game. But uh, Raphael was a big on camera guy. And yeah, hadn't really done a lot of voiceover. And there's a scene later on where he's addressing um, all of the workers. And the thing about Raphael was that <clears throat> he physically performs when he's in the studio. Oh, right. So as he was addressing the field, he kept on going off mic. And so the engineer's like, oh, we got to keep him on mic. And so I said, you know, I said, hey, Raphael, you know, can you stay on mic? He's like, oh, really sorry, really sorry. We re-rolled, and all of a sudden his energy just went Oh, interesting. Down. And so it, was just, it just wasn't working the same way. So yeah. we pulled out another two mics and put them out. Oh, so that's that, great. So that he could then go... You know, you are the fat cats of industry, and he could kind of move his head, and we yeah. still caught it. And so then we just cut around um, the three tracks to get the, t oh, the that's final so take. Oh, so crazy! Yeah, but he, yeah he's a great actor. Hmm, these bees don't seem too busy. Cold one, huh, Terry? Yeah, it's always cold when you're unemployed, Manny. Who's unemployed? Aren't you guys in the union? The union? <laughs> They don't look after us, little guys. They're run by the coppers. And you of all people should know, Manny, that the cops are in bed with the gambling joints. Hey, I run an honest joint. We ain't in bed with nobody. What about the protection money? We pay every week. On the nose, through the nose, like an honest place should. See what I mean? This town is just a big conga line of hustlers, all laughing and dancing and scratching each other's backs. Why aren't you guys up there working? You don't know the deal down here on the docks, do you, Manny? If you want to get the jobs, you have to pay the unions extra dues. And that ain't cheap. We don't pay, and so they put us on barrel duty. Why don't you just pay the union off, then? We got our pride, Manny. We're straight stingers, you know? Not to mention we just don't have any cash to spare now that we're not working. I mean, it's like a problem where, uh, uh the solution it makes the problem, uh, worse. Like a catch-22? Yeah, wow. I wish I knew words like that. If the union is crooked, why don't you register a complaint? <laughs> That's a good one, Manny. Did you hear that, guys? He thinks we should register a complaint. You bees are being exploited. You should do something about it. Yeah, what can we do? We're just a handful of unorganized drones. We don't know nothing about nothing except just how to take it on a chin. If the cops own the union, and gambling's in bed with the cops. Yeah, yeah, and then who really runs the gambling, right? Well, no offense, but uh, Max Amino is really the big boy in town, obviously. But word is, he gets his orders from some hardcore gangsters in El Mero. Yeah, that fancy cat track is really just a big laundromat, if you get my drift. You guys know a seaman, Naranja? Nah, sea bees and sailors don't mix. But you're in the same union. Well, maybe so, but some traditions are sacred there, Manny. I think you're just a bunch of complainers. You don't know what it's like, man. Every day we come down here, we try and make an honest living. We find out that you gotta be a crooked bee to win down here. He knocks the pollen out of you, Manny. It makes you weak. Since you're not using your tools, you think I could borrow them? Well, we sold them to feed our families. Then how are you ever gonna work? I, I told you things were messed up down here, Manny. I, I told you. You bees gotta be strong. Things just aren't the way they should be down here, Manny. It's like the worker bees, they do all the work. But we can't affect the, uh, the, uh... Ah, it's like the way that things are produced should be controlled by... I mean, we should... Die. Forget it. I'm just a dumb, hungry, out-of-work bee. I think these are the words you're looking for. The workers shall control the means of production. The workers shall control the means of production. Yes, that's it. That's what I've been trying to say. Who will say? Stop the fat cats of industry from building these ships with the pollen of the exploiting working class! Bye!
I say we fight back! Yeah. Hmm, what's this? Maybe a bee agitator? I say lay down your tools right now and show the man just who makes the honey around here! You know, I always thought bees came in two colors, yellow and black. But you look all red to me, my friend. Ah! Hey, what are you doing? We've got the right to assemble peacefully. Good. You're going to need a lot of assembly after we take you apart, comrade. Betty! Get me a lawyer! Get me a lawyer! Hogan, that's gonna make it tough to spring the kid and get him back out here. Good thing I know a lawyer who owes me a favor. To some extent, uh, Grim Fandango is a bit of a, of a mutt. It's got pieces of Jedi Knight, it's got pieces of uh, scum, it's got pieces of uh, outlaws, it's got pieces of, you know, it's got Imus coming in, mm -hmm. and it's got the Lua language. So it was a game kind of made on a shoot, you know, for all the technical challenges in it, a lot of pieces were sort of pre existing, and kind of it was a matter of maybe a new, new era of game development where you don't write everything from scratch, but you kind of put it together in the best possible way. Well, and one of the the kind of the, the side effects of that was since um, we had pretty robust solutions to video playback and rendering and, and art pipes in front of us, uh, it really, you know, a lot of the effort, aside from just making everything, all the blocking and tackling working, was spent in on how to make making games like this convenient and producible and artist friendly and, uh, um, you know, you, you had built some tools that were uh, really, un unlike the things that appeared in Render Droid or, or Smush or some of the technologies yeah. it was built on. So it's a bit of a mutt in that we borrowed a bunch of really great technology, um, but there's also a lot of really innovative stuff. I love how all the characters have very distinct voices that match their personality and their look. Like how much would Tim give you direction and how much was your direction um, influencing? Well, like ideally when you go through the process, you, um, you, know, you have character pictures along with the audition copy and, and we would send that out to the various agencies and um, the auditions would come back. And, um, I mean, it, it kind of, the process kind of does that for you because you're, you're listening to the auditions and you're looking at the picture and you narrow it down to like, you know, a handful of candidates and, and mm -hmm. uh, then sort of sit down, we'd sit down with Tim and, and uh, you know, just go through them and, you know, that's, you know, sometimes there's only one choice and you just know it. Right. Um, it's just so great, yeah. all of them. What you do is you you cast for like the, the major characters and then you use that same talent pool with a lot of the smaller um, characters right. and so that's why Kay is you know he was cast for Velasco but then the crew PA just was one of those that's like okay well that fits he works. So you let the actors pretty much kind of come up with their character as well when they look at the picture? Yeah yeah, yeah. Well, definitely like for this secondary characters they're totally undefined when you're in the studio and so you just kind of sit there look at the picture uh, Look at the lines, talk about it, just set a dial of voice in and, and, uh, and then go. I just create, I love it. It's just creative everywhere, you know, like through the whole thing. Like not just with us, but even with the actors and right. stuff like that. And you really are like watching a movie. Yeah, it's amazing. Absolutely. 
And you really want that relationship between sort of the voiceover director and the actor to be collaborative and allow them the freedom to bring stuff to the table and try things and, um, you know, just it just adds a lot. Oh, that reminds me. I forgot about my date with Inez. Hello, operator? Yeah, it's me, baby. How'd you know? Hey, don't say that, sweetheart. You know I meant to stop by and... <laughs> I'm more happy about leaving town every minute. And uh, so that guy, Toto Santos, which is the name of All Souls Day, he that was one important casting thing that meant so much at the time. And um, I love the usual suspects. Yes. And there's a, a burn victim at the very beginning of the game, a guy who was burned on the on the ship. Right. And he's in the he's in the bed, and he's the first guy who says, "Guys, are so say." Okay, right. Is this uh, Hungarian or Polish? Yeah, and, yeah. And we got that actor to do Toto Santos's voice because I was like, I want him to sound like that guy from Usual Suspects. And so if you listen to him, he's That's just awesome. he's like, I just I wanted to have him say, "Guys, are so say." <laughs> A lot of stains for a guy with no bodily fluids. Hola, Toro. Como estas? Uh, not now, Manny. I'm in the middle of something with Naranya here. It's empty. Yeah, I got to remember to get more liquid nitrogen from more Liquid nitrogen? Freeze the bones. Less painful that way. Hey, that sounds good. I could go for that. You got plenty of painkiller in that bottle of yours, so shut up and hold still. Strong stuff. That ought to kill the pain. Should, but it don't. I kill the pain, turn off my drill, stop working. How about that? No, no, no. I can take it. Bring it on, pops. I'll pop you, sailor boy. He'd see me do it. It's empty. Hold still, Lotario. Dead. Ugh, Kaifa, wake up. I don't work on drunks. Resek Chavargo. What kind of sailor are you? <clears throat> Can't handle bulls, huh? What you tell us gonna know? What anger at the name folks give his at me? The tell you I shan't belong to watch you. Well, let's go. Toto, I got your boy Naranya here. <laughs> My he here. Well, he sobered up. I send him to limbo. Yeah, yeah. You'll make it there by morning. Promise. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That Let's is what, what I told you. Let's see what you got on you, huh, sailor? <laughs> Seaman and Selma Naranja Ensign third class. Doesn't look like you'll be showing I up to work in the morning. I gave him the idea in first place. <laughs> ah, hey, Velasco! Manny, do you mind? Artist at work here, eh? So, you still going? Well, that's the hole I saw Carlos' metal detector fall through. Oh, no. My 
scythe. I like my scythe. My scythe. Stinky, but it could be worse. 